subtract 3. Now all we have to do is add 3 to both sides, which gives us negative 1 is equal to 2x, giving us x is equal to, well, divide both sides by 2, negative 1 half. So we would say x is equal to negative 1 half. And that's our first question done, not too bad. Not too bad. Let's continue. Question number two. I'll bring it down actually. So this time we are determining the coordinate of the point where a line crosses the x or y axis. So still pretty self-explanatory. Nothing too complex yet. I hope you are following along. You know, I'm not going to teach aspects too much, but more, you know, over-explain. I'll try my best. So determine the coordinate of the point where y equals 2x plus 6 crosses the x-axis. Now, if you can imagine, we have some sort of uh, graph that looks like this. And we have a line. I don't know what this line looks like yet. Okay, so it's got a positive gradient, so it may look something like this. And we simply want to work out where this line crosses the x-axis. So that would be at this point right here, because this is our x-axis. And this is our y-axis. Now we know graph starts at zero and works up. So when it crosses the x-axis, we can agree in saying that the y value is just zero. We don't know what x is. You know, in fact, this line could actually be over here. It could be all the way back here. But either way, whenever it crosses the x-axis, y will be zero. So with this little sketch, we know that y in this equation is zero at the coordinate where the point crosses the x-axis. So in that case, we know that zero, oops, <laughs> is equal to 2x plus 6. Now, just doing a little bit of algebra, let's subtract 6 from both sides. And this tells us, dividing by 2, that x is equal to negative 3. But we are asked to find the coordinate. So, the coordinate, we write like this where x is negative 3, and we know y is 0. Now, I'm going to quickly take this moment to mention that this paper has lots and lots of questions. I will link it in the description in case you want to go ahead and give them a try yourself. I don't exactly know how many I'll make through in this video. And considering I never did GCS either, may even be some questions that, yes, even though I have a maths degree, I still might not know how to do because maths is taught very differently in different countries. You might get taught particular things that you don't get taught in different countries. So, just a little heads up. So, question three, the categorization is determine the gradient of a line using two points. So, we have B as the point, negative 
power 4 and q is the point 1 negative 5. Find the gradient of p, q. Now I also like, one of the things I like about this is we can see all the papers that are being used throughout these questions. So these are legitimate exam questions for those who may be willing to go and want to try out these papers. So let's find the gradient of P, Q. Well, there's not really much way of explaining this without going into too much detail, but the formula for the gradient given two points is the gradient M is equal to the second Y coordinate. Subtract the first coordinate divided by the second x coordinate, subtract the first x coordinate. So in this case, q is our second point. So this is going to be x1, uh, sorry, x2, y2, and over here, x1, y1. So if we input those values in to our equation, we are going to get minus 5, minus 4, divided by 1, minus, minus 4, which is just plus 4. And this is going to equal, and I'm actually just going to write it on this line because this is what the gradient is. So it's negative 9 over 5. So, you know, not like a very nice gradient, but it's still the right answer regardless. Question number 4. Determining gradient in the context of bounds. Okay, I actually, I'm not going to lie to you all. I don't actually know what that means. Uh, let, we'll take a look at it though. In triangle ABC, angle ABC equals 90 degrees, correct? AB is 5.3 centimeters to two significant figures. BC is 4.8 to two significant figures. The base AB is horizontal. Calculate the lower bound. I actually don't recognize that term, uh, lower bound, when uh, talking about gradients. I don't know if that's something I probably should have heard of, but I don't recognize it, so I'm not going to attempt it and embarrass myself. And I apologize if you do understand it. Maybe you can let me know in the comments what that means. Okay, question five. Determining the gradient from a graph in applied context. Oliver records the distance from London to each of eight cities in the United States. He also records the time taken to fly from London to each of these cities. The scatter graph is shown. Okay, so we have the time taken. Uh, in minutes to get to each city in miles. So the further away, obviously, the longer it will take and the closer it is, the less time it will take. So we assume, you know, before even looking at this graph, that we're going to have a positive gradient and that it would probably look something like this, depending on who's flying the plane, obviously. <laughs> if you've got like a terrible pilot, you know, you might have um, some really odd point out here. Anyways, I'm assuming, yeah, there we go. Oh, calculate the gradient of the line of best fit. So only the gradient, we don't need to work out the entire equation. So that's not too bad. In this case, what I'll do is just um, pick a point on the graph, maybe pick two points and determine the gradient the same way we did um, before. Simple as. So let's find two points um, that lie perfectly on the 
find a best fit so I can see. Um, that one might be good. That one's pretty good. This one at the top's very good. It's quite difficult to make out where that is. Um, it's kind of two boxes back from whatever this is. 650. No, there are 10 boxes, which means each box is 5. So two boxes back will be 640. So one of our points is going to be 640. Um, sorry, this is actually really tricky because of the size of the printout. And again, it's kind of two boxes back from here. And uh, there are 10 boxes, and each box, in this case, is going to be 50, so that's going to be 100 back. So that's going to be 5,400x. I've not really given myself enough room for it. 5,400. Um... Is it 640? That's going to be one of our coordinates. And the second coordinate we'll go with, it's good to pick one that's as close as you can to the line. So maybe this one here, which again is two boxes off here. So that's going to be 560. Um, if it goes to there, on the X, I've done them the wrong way around, I've just realized. Uh, don't worry, I'll fix that. So, 640, 5400, zero, zero, and I'll replace that. Luckily, I noticed it because otherwise we'd get a very different answer. Uh, 560. That's this point up here. Gosh, this is a horrid question. <laughs> and it looks like one box back from the middle of here. So the middle of there is going to be 4,750. So one box back is going to be 4,700. our two points. So, took our time being able to read the graph, but that's not the, uh, the tricky part. Uh, well, that is the tricky part. I mean, the easy part will be calculating the gradient. So, let's base this in. These are our points. And again, we're just going to do our m equals y to take y1 over x to take x1. Again, 5,400. Subtract 4,700. And this is good because we know for sure we're going to get a positive gradient, which is what we expect. 560. And then this is just going to give us, on the top, actually I'm going to leave one space because I'm going to simplify it. So on the top we're going to have 700 divided by 80. And then, you know, cancelling down, we're going to get 70 over 8, which is 35 over... that simplify any further? I don't think so. <laughs> and I hope that we have got ourselves the correct answer there. 35 over 4 seems it. So all good there. Apologies about that. I had to just quickly go and replace the battery in my camera. So we'll move on to the next question here, which is question six. The categorization is determine the gradient. Again. 
again of a straight line using an equation not in the form y equals mx plus c. So here we have the straight line L as the equation 3x minus 2y equals 15. Find the gradient of L. So to find the gradient of a straight line not in that form, as you can imagine, the best thing to do is to get it into this form. So we have it in this form. Let's try and rearrange to get it in that form. So what I'm going to do is kind of in one whole stage, I'm going to add 2y to both sides and subtract 15 from both sides. So this will actually give me 2y and this would be on the right hand side, but I've just flipped everything. 2y is equal to 3x minus 15. Now, we still want it to be with y, so we have to divide by 2. And if we divide by 2 on the left hand side, we have to do the same on the right. So dividing by 2, we get y is equal to 3 over 2x subtract 15 over 2 and we can read off the gradient in this form now as the gradient is equal to 3 over 2 and that was actually you know pretty easy question 17 determine whether two lines are parallel a is the point with coordinates 1, 3, and B is the point with coordinates minus 2, minus 1. A line L has the equation 3x is equal to 4 minus f, 3y is equal to 4 minus 2x. Is line L parallel to AB? Well, we have a little rule in maths about parallel lines. So if we have a line Let's actually make a little graph again. That was quite fun with the way we did that. So if we have uh, a graph with one line, let's do it in blue, that looks like this. If we have another line, which I'll do in red, over here, which is parallel. Now parallel means runs kind of, you know, in the same uh, line. It's the same line, but just shifted, basically. So maybe it, you know, goes like this. We have a rule in maths that says that if two lines are parallel, they have the same gradient, basically. You can see the gradient of this one will be the same as this one. If this one wasn't parallel, let's say it was like this, they don't have the same gradient. We can clearly see that the steepness is not the same. Let's delete that. So, if we can work out the gradient of both lines and they are the same, then we would say yes. If they're not, then no. So let's work out the gradient of the first line, the line A, B. So let's do R. Oops, we're still in red. Let's go back to black. So I'll write this like this, A, B. Um, should do a better notation. The gradient of A, B is equal to, now again, we've got our formula y2 take y1. I'm just going to assume we know it by now. So negative 1 subtract 3 divided by negative 2 subtract 1 which is equal to negative 4 divided by negative 3. Okay. Now let's do the same for uh, line now we have to do kind of what we did in question six and rearrange. So I can already see that it's probably not. So we want to divide by three for everything to, um, to get y on its own, to get it in the form y equals mx plus 
plus C. So let's rearrange this. So I'm going to divide everything by 3 and this will give us Y. Let's do this. Y is equal to 4 over 3 minus 2 over 3X. Now the gradient is the bit in front of X, which is negative 2 over 3, which is not same as the gradient here. So we would say that they are not parallel. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. Pretty satisfying. Question 8. Determine whether two lines are perpendicular. Negative 2 to 
three as our x values. So let's work out the points where x is those values. So we have this equation that's pretty neat and pretty handy. So we'll write out y is equal to 3x minus 4. Now as this is our straight line, if we have a point where x, the coordinate is negative 2, we can say when x is equal to negative 2, we get, um, well, let's substitute it into our equation, we get y is equal to 3 times negative 2 minus 4, which is minus 6 minus 4, which gives us minus 10. So our first point is going to be minus 2 minus 10. And similarly, when x is equal to 3, we can do this one maybe a bit faster. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 4 is 5. Our second point is going to be 3, 5. So minus 2, minus 10 is right here on our graph. So let's mark that point. And then 3, 5, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's just up the top. And then, obviously, in an exam, I'd highly encourage you to use a ruler, but luckily for me, I can just go shoop. Oh, of course that would happen. <laughs> we can just go shoop. And it forms a nice straight line for me. So, question 10 is categorization the same as above, but for an equation not in the form y equals mx plus c. On the grid, draw the graph 2x minus 3y is equal to 6 from x is 0 to x is 9. So let's take our equation again. I'm going to solve for y because we're given our x coordinates. So let's rearrange to get it just to be y on its own. So again, I'm going to add 3y to both sides and subtract 6 from both sides to give me 3y is equal to 2x subtract 6. Then I'm going to just divide by 3. just going to be all well, this is just 0 minus 2 so that's just minus 2 and when x is equal to 9 this time we're actually going to have to work it out we're going to have y is equal to 2 times 9 it's 18 over 3 well that's just 6 minus 2 6 minus 2 is 4 so our two points this time are 0, negative 2. Um, yep, yeah, down here. And 9, 4. 9, 4. And again. A nice straight line. And it's actually nice because we can see that it crosses the x-axis at 3. And if we remember from earlier, it crosses the x-axis at 3 when y is 0. So we can check that. When y is 0, we get 2x is equal to 6. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 3. So this diagram, not only being to scale, but also tells me that I've done this right. So that's pretty neat. On to question 11. Determine the equation. 
continuation of a line given its sketch. So we have a line that's been sketched and they've literally just told us find the equation of the line. Okay, so I'm going to just state things from this line. The first thing I can state is that the y-axis intercept is positive 4. So y, I'm just going to write y int is 4. And the reason I do this is because when we're working out the equation of a line, we need two things. We need the y-intercept, and as you've probably guessed, we need the gradient m. Now the gradient m I could just work out by seeing it goes down 1 and across 2, or by working out the, like, two points, and, you know, it's the difference in the height, the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. So in this case, it is negative a half, because the distance in the vertical component is negative 1. For every negative 1, the x component increases by 2. So the gradient is negative a half. So therefore, the equation of this line is y is equal to negative a half x plus 4. And again, we could check this by picking a point. Let's pick an x point, say, I don't know, 4. When x is 4, multiply that by negative a half. We get minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2 plus 4 is 2. It gives us 2, which is perfect. So, another thing I like about these questions, and a lot of the time you can actually check to see if you've done it right, it's the same with like simultaneous equations and things like that. If you can ever check you've done something right in maths, always do it. It's always super helpful. What's next with question number 12? Determine an equation of a line using two coordinates where one is on the y-axis. So the line L cuts, 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 the y-axis at 0, 5. L also passes through the point. Two, one. Find the equation of L. So this time, actually, we cannot work out the y-intercept just by looking at it. So we're going to have to use a little bit of formulae. Um, well, actually, we don't. <laughs> because if one point is on the y-axis, if we visualize that, Visualize is that a word? I think I mean visualize. If it's on the y-axis, say this point here, 0, 5, that is the y-axis intercept. I don't know what this looks like yet, but maybe something like this. So, we know already the y-axis intercept is Okay, now the gradient, let's just use our gradient formula. So 1 subtract 5 over 2 subtract 0 is equal to negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So our equation of the line is y is equal to negative 2 x plus 5. Now they should ask us to sketch it. <laughs> Question 13, determine the equation of a line parallel to another that passes through a given point. 
Okay, let's zoom in to really get this. L1 and L2 are parallel lines, so we know they have the same gradient. The equation of L1 is y equals 3x plus 2. L2 passes through the point 3, 4. Find an equation for L2. Well, we know the gradient of L2 is the same as L1, and the gradient of L1 is 3. So the gradient M of L2, it's like a subscript, subscript, subscript squared. Would you even say that? It's just 3. So all we need now is the y-intercept. And how can we determine that? Well, we have a point on the line. So if we have a point on the line, we can solve for it because we have the equation y equals mx plus c. We know m is 3. We know x is 3. And y is 4. So 4 is equal to 3 times 3 plus c. So 4 is equal to 9 plus c. Subtract 9 from both sides, we just get c is equal to minus 5. So our equation just turns out to be y is equal to 3x minus 5. I think I'll do a couple more questions before I round off the video here, but I hope that you have enjoyed it thus far. Maybe I'll end out at question 15. As above, parallel to an equation not in that form, so pretty much the same. The equation of a line L is 2x minus 3y equals 6. Find the equation of the line which is parallel to L and passes through the point 6, 9. Also, I apologize about my rumbly stomach. <laughs> so, first things first. Let's rearrange this line to work out the gradient. So we'll do the gradient of L. So let's rearrange to get 3y is equal to 2x minus 6 divided by 3. y is equal to 2 over 3. They love their fractions of gradients, don't they? Uh, minus 2. So the gradient is just going to be 2 over 3. So the gradient of the corresponding parallel line is also going to be 2 over 3. And we have a point. So again, we have 9 is equal to 6 multiplied by 2 over 3. You know, I'm going to be consistent and just use the multiply symbol. Uh, plus C. 9 is equal to 12 over 3, which is 4 plus C and well. I, was, I thought we had the same thing, but we don't. <laughs> um, so we have uh, subtract 4 from both sides. We have 5 equals C. So we have Y is equal to 2 over 3X plus 5, which is really similar to above. And we'll make this the last question of the night. Question number 15. The categorization is determine the equation of a line that goes through two points, leaving the equation of the form ax plus bx equals c, or ax plus by plus c is equal to zero, where a, b, and c are integers. Okay. The line L passes through the points negative 2, 3, and 6, 9. Find an equation of the line that is parallel to L and passes through the point 5, 1. We're going to have to do a lot of work here to round off the video. <laughs> Give your answer in that form. AX plus BY equals C. Okay, where A, B, and C are integers. So let's work at the gradient of L. So 
gradient of L is going to equal 9 subtract 3 divided by 6 subtract negative 2 so plus 2 is going to equal 6 over 8 which is going to equal divided by 2 3 quarters so the corresponding parallel line is the same gradient and then put it with this point here where this is x and this is y we get negative 1 is equal to 5 times 3 divided by 4 plus c and you know what I'm just gonna 15 over 4 and I'm actually adding 1 to that which is gonna give me 19 over 4 which is a bit peculiar so I'm gonna make sure I've done this right let's check again I'm gonna get 6 over 8 which is 3 quarters that's correct and negative 1 is equal to 5 multiply by that yeah it's just not nice when we add 1 we're gonna get c is equal to negative 19 over 4 which is really not nice <laughs> but you know hey yo um, and when we have that we can put it into this form so y in this case uh, oh unless they oh I forgot they want it as integers they want it as integers so that's why they don't like it like this because right now I have it in the form y is equal to 3 over 4x minus 19 over 4 but they don't want uh, fractions they want integers so to do that we are going to rearrange and multiply everything through by 4 so let's begin by multiplying everything through by 4 and that will simply give us 4y is equal to 3x minus 19. There we go. And now we want to rearrange to get it in this form. So we have this 3x. Now we want by. So we just want to take away 4y equals and then 19. And that is going to be that. So that took us a little minute there, but we finally got it. <laughs> um, and yeah, that is uh, going to just about do it for tonight's video. I hope you enjoyed me going through a lot of straight line questions here. Uh, I know my stomach did. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, then let me know in the comments uh, maybe what particular topics you'd like to see me do because I'm always open to do pretty much any topic whenever I do these kind of problem solving videos. So let me know what topics are your favorite. And maybe, just maybe, I'll do that in the next one on a sheet just like this. Again, I'll pop this sheet in the description if you want to give some of the questions I call yourself. Maybe you're studying and want to practice some straight line or maybe even just for fun want to solve some of the questions like I have. And in which case, you're awesome. <laughs> it goes on to do some more perpendicular, some more graphs. I'm sure, yeah, circles will get involved at some point. And um, yeah, it looks like it actually goes down to question 22, so we didn't 